All right, now we've moved on to part three in our video series for isoparametric quadrilateral elements, where we look at Gauss quadrature, which is the numerical method that we will use to integrate the stiffness matrix for this element type. Okay, let's go ahead and review the stiffness matrix equation one more time. There it is. First, we start with the determinants of the Jacobian matrix. That's what maps our natural coordinates of xi eta to the global coordinates x, y. We have our constitutive matrix, which is based on Hooke's law. And so it's really just composed of material properties. We have our elastic modulus, Poisson ratio, and the form depends on whether you're looking at plane stress or plane strain conditions. Our thickness of the element, the part two of this video series looked at the strain displacement matrix, which really just relates our strain vector to the displacements. And that's all well and good, but to correct, pardon me, direct integration is not so easy because the Jacobian matrix, well, that has some linear terms in it, it has the xi and eta. The strain displacement matrix also has xi and eta. And so the result is we have this double integration of an eight by eight matrix. Remember it's four nodes with four degree, or pardon me, with two degrees of freedom each, X and Y direction at each node. So eight by eight stiffness matrix. And that would be composed of cubic polynomials. That's, that's, that's gonna be a lot. So instead, what we will use is Gauss quadrature and that the beauty of it is that it turns that double integral into double summation of that integrand. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what the heck is Gauss quadrature. All right, so it's the takes, pardon me, it takes the integral of a polynomial. So that's just this representation that we have here. And in this case, we're going to use the very basic version. You can use some methods to use other intervals, but it's especially useful between minus one and one, where you can take the integral of any polynomial order k and say that it is equal to the sum of the polynomial evaluated at n or more sampling points. Or and these are also called Gauss points or integration points, Gauss integration points, uh, all means the same thing. And so just kind of turns that into a summation that integral goes away now we just have a summation and that polynomial in the middle there is no longer integrated but it's just evaluated at these specific sampling points or gauss points and we have to have weighting factors applied and so that's what that w is so just depending on how many gauss points you have which gauss points are currently being evaluated, that's what, what weighting factor would need to be applied. We'll go over that in the next slide. All right, so the one criteria is that the minimum number of sampling points n is equal to the order of the polynomial k plus one divided by two. So that's the number that are necessary for uh, actually a complete representation, a completely accurate, where we can say this is an equal sign. Now you can use less points and in that case, it turns into an approximation. It's not necessarily exact. You can use more points, but if you use more points, you just continue to get the same answer. All right, so here's a table of Gauss sampling points, Gauss integration points, whatever you might wanna call them. And so we have, first we start with the number of sampling points that you might have in your particular integration substitution and what the location would be in the xi direction, what the location, or pardon me, the corresponding weight factor would be, and what is the max order of polynomial that can be solved. So if you want two sampling points, the sampling points turned it out to be at plus and minus one over square root three. The weighting factors are 1.0 for each, and the max polynomial that it can solve is three probably the max order of the polynomial. If we choose three sampling points, here we, this is minus square root of 0. 0.6 plus square root of 0. 0.6, and we now have five, an order five polynomial can be solved with 
three sampling points, okay? And, and if you have two sampling points, it's relatively easy, right? We just have one for our weighting factors. It changes a bit if you have three sampling points and note that the three values are different. Okay, so we're gonna take an example of using, of applying Gauss quadrature. This does not apply to finite element analysis right now. This is just an example problem in one dimension. Say that we have a function g in terms of xi that looks like that. And if we wanted to do a regular integration of that function between minus one to one, we could go ahead and do that. And if we evaluated it, we'd end up getting six and two thirds. All right, I'm gonna assume everybody knows how to do regular integration, so we won't go over that in detail. Gauss integration, we're gonna choose two. We're gonna choose two Gauss integration points, Gauss sampling points, and those are at these locations, xi, right, plus minus one over square root three. And so if we go ahead and apply this substitution, remember like this, this equation here, we're using Gauss integration, Gauss quadrature, is the same as, oh, come on, there we go. There's the pointer. It's the same as what we have here, 1.0 for our weighting factors, and we just have i equals one to two. So if we go ahead and make those substitutions, we also get six and two thirds. Fantastic. So just wanted to do this to show that you get the same exact thing if you use Gauss quadrature or if you use regular integration. Okay, fantastic. We're gonna move on to double integration, two dimensions. So let's assume that we have the following equation in two dimensions that we want to integrate. We can go ahead and make this substitution, get rid of the integrals and replace them with summation signs, add in those weighting factors there. Of course, they are just 1.0. We can put in what values of eta and what values of xi, right? So we are really just using Gauss quadrature n equals two, but we're doing it in both the xi direction and the eta direction. So it would actually be four points total that we would be doing. We'd have to have four times through this integrand here, right? We have two points for xi, two points for eta. Okay. And that's where we write down just what we mentioned. Okay. So we go ahead and take a look at the first point, which would be xi at negative one over square root three, eta at negative one over square root three, and we would go ahead and evaluate this whole integrand, given this equation there. We would go ahead and do the same for the second point, right? Eta is still the same, xi is now plus one over square root three. If we go ahead and move on, we have the third point. All right, xi is one over square root three, eta is one over square root three, and our last one is xi is negative one over square root three, and eta is one over square root three. So notice how we just took this portion here, right, the integrand of this equation, and we just evaluated it at four possible locations for the xi and eta portions, and we just took each of those and we just add them all up. If you go ahead and add them all up, gives you eight. And so that would be the solution for that problem. Okay, so now we're going to take, pardon me, I should say building off what we did before, we're going to go ahead and see how Gauss quadrature works for the isoparametric element stiffness matrix. And so here, the isoparametric element stiffness matrix, there's our thickness, there's the strain displacement matrix, there's the constitutive matrix, there's the determinant of the Jacobian matrix. Uh, we don't want those integrals, so we'll go ahead and replace them with summation signs. And there's our element. We have a two by two grid for Gauss points. All right, here's the two by two grid for Gauss points. And we can say a two by two because if we looked at this matrix, we would see that we would have linear terms here linear terms here and here we mentioned this in the previous slide so it turns out that it's a it's a cubic in terms of either xi or eta so we're choosing the two by two grid that should be able to sufficiently solve for that there's our first gauss point there's our second gauss point 
there's our third Gauss point, and there's our fourth Gauss point. Okay, so we're choosing this as our method for evaluating our stiffness matrix. There's our Gauss points labeled. Our weighting factors are, of course, just equal to one. And that concludes it. So now we'll move on to the reflection questions. The first reflection question is, what is the main advantage of using Gauss quadrature? The next is, what conditions must be met in order for Gauss quadrature to be effective? And why is n equal 2 sufficient in each direction for applying Gauss quadrature? And finally, where are the sampling points, the Gauss points, the Gauss integration points, where are those located within the four node isoparametric quadrilateral element? And this should conclude part three of our video series on isoparametric quadrilateral elements, focusing on using Gauss quadrature to integrate the stiffness matrix.